Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. Thanks for being with us. I'm Jay Zawoski here with Greg Boyson and Mario Tirabasi. We've got Lawrence uh, behind the scenes spinning the dials today, helping us out. We have a lot to get to today and not a lot of time to do it, so we're going to get right to it after we tell you a couple things. Make sure you smash the like button on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page. Podcast listeners, like, subscribe, follow, all that great stuff. And please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And the perks of being with us when we're live. We were digging through the old CHGO couch cushions, and we found some old Sean Anderson hair clippings. We found some uh, (laughs) candy wrappers, all kinds of stuff. But we also found two tickets to our Blackhawks takeover. Mm -hmm. That is next week, Hawks and Flames on the 26th. Yep, that is Tuesday. We have two tickets left. So if you want to join us for our last United Center takeover of the season, again, the game is Tuesday, March 26th. The game is at 7.30. We're doing a 5.30 p.m. meetup at Crossroads on Madison. What is special about these tickets? Crossroads. I'm getting to that. We are going to be sitting in the one hundred level mm. for this game mm, yes if you're a diehard They're you're gonna save riff raff down yeah mm. down with the fancy people yes. mm-hmm. if you're a diehard you're gonna save 20 percent as you always do uh so there's two tickets left that's it so jump on it all chgo.com hurry up because <laughs> i have a feeling now they'll be gone before we probably get through our first two mailbag questions and so. if you're a diehard you get 20 percent off that's I right thought, i thought you're gonna say and they're gone and they're gone, no, <laughs> and they're gone. Uh, they might be i don't know <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, jump on those fast. They're there. Jump on if you want to join us. We're going to be out there. It's going to be an awesome time. Sit down there with the cake eaters and, and have a great time. So You know, i got to be honest. I did, uh, at our last takeover, I uh, took a little trip down to the 100 level with our guy, Carm. Yeah, he, Carm and can't uh, come up with us. He's, well, he's too good. He's all I'm, all I'm saying you're talking about cake eaters and all the riff, the fancy people and not letting the riff riffraff. There was some asshole in, like, the second row who was obviously a Red Wings fan. Was just like swearing and being a moron, and then there was a like the woman he was with would just refusing to sit down, like yeah, because they're entitled rich people. Yeah, right. it was so. No idiots. one's ever told them no before. There's, so well, there's definitely idiots down there. There's We're not saying there's there. idiots. Yeah. It's yeah. a different kind of idiot. Yeah, it's idiots that have bail money. <laughs> well, now we can be those idiots. Fair enough. Yeah. I think the worst. I love the 200 level, but it's the worst to watch the game because Why? it's the club level, and they have constant service to all your seats throughout the 200 level. So there's literally, if you don't want to get up and get a beer, you tell somebody and they'll go get it for you. So uh, it's all horrible. game, all game. <laughs> yeah, well, it sucks when you're watching hockey and there's some guy, a waiter, walking up and down the aisle the whole night. Mm, mm-hmm. They don't wait for the whistle. Yeah, I mean, I know what you're saying. Yeah, it's, yeah. They don't wait for the whistles. The Garcon, problem. bring me my but tendies, also, please. And the 200 <laughs> level has the least amount of people, so the lines are short. Go up and get your uh, own beer, Yeah, counterpoint, though, is that if people are getting up, they're probably also not waiting for the whistle because they're elitists who don't understand hockey. Yeah. So, yeah. I would I would like my, my treats and drinks brought to me as I uh, don't want to miss any of the games. Like so. pocket bacon. That's what the intermissions yes. are for. Hi, Charlie. You got 17 minutes to go get whatever the heck you want. Well, you guys, you guys see how often I get up in the press box for treats and trinkets. So it's like if, 90, if I don't, 94 times. Every yeah. uh, stoppage. Yeah. Sometimes I get stoppage. Look, that popcorn doesn't eat itself. All right? <laughs> it doesn't. So I, I have to do my do my uh, my part. Oh, Region Rev can't come? Oh, don't Well, worry. get in touch with us, Region Rev. Maybe we can uh, work something out to get you your money back and have a couple more tickets available for people who want to go. So uh, you know you know how to do it. If not... Um, yeah, get in touch with one of us and we'll direct you the right way. That that sucks. We were looking forward to seeing you, but next time, next there time. will be more takeovers, many more events. So, yeah. All right, let's get to the uh, remainder of our mailbag Monday show, uh, mailbag Monday show questions. Rather, uh, we had so many that we only got to th- through the diehard Discord questions. Mm-hmm. So we got some from Twitter and we got some other stuff on the back end. We're going to get to as well. So fired up, Law. All righty, let's go with Joe Smith. AKA Shyhawk 9933. He asks, How do you feel about the idea of bringing back old friend Max Domi? Seems like someone who could fit the two year window and crash the net, get to dirty areas, plus would provide someone who could keep teams honest on taking liberties on uh, Badar. Yeah. Yes. I started this campaign last week. Bring him back. I'm all for it. I think it would Makes be sense. a great fit. We know what he's capable of. He seemed to really enjoy playing here. Uh, he already signed here. Um, he already signed here once, basically because of Luke Richardson. He mm-hmm. plays exactly the way Luke Richardson wants to play. He yep. had a lot of success here, too. He did. He had great numbers here. And uh, come back, get that 
two to three year deal and you put Max Domi on the line with Kershev and Bedard, you got something there. Yep. Mm -hmm. And And, and last night we were talking about centers and center depth and stuff. You know, Bedard, he's maybe still working out at at, at center from time to time. Like, you know, he doesn't take every face off. Um, Andres Mm -hmm. Tanisiu is is being played at center. You know, you see who you may or may not draft uh, first or second overall uh, in this year's draft. Um, Domi played center here and did a really good job yeah. at it. Like he could, he could be one of those guys that you slot in as as one of those wing center he options. Like and one fifty four percent of his face, yeah, something ridiculous like that. Yeah, get Max Domi and then add Jack Roslovic or Jake DeBrusque, and that's a successful offseason. I'm pretty happy with that. Sure, you're pretty deep down the middle that way Wouldn't too. Hate so, that. yep, yep, good idea. Next. <laughs> That was really fast, you guys. All right, here's Alberto Vitale. If you were commissioner, would you expand the playoffs to include more than half the league? Even a short playing round for spots 15 to 18 would probably make the league more money. No. Uh, no. I don't no. know. Nope. I, don't, I, I, I think half the league is enough when they expand. Uh, if it's an e- if they ever get to an even number, because they're going to expand and it's going to be 33 teams. if they get out to 34. Jesus. Please no. Um, then, I don't know. If you get out to thirty four, then you're if you're if you're at sixteen, it's less than half make the playoffs, which is still fine. It's still enough. Um, but I don't know. I wonder if I wonder if at that point maybe you change the format of the playoffs, which is something we can talk about later in the show. But as is as is right now, I would I would keep it at sixteen teams. It's enough. When they did twenty four, it was ridiculous. Um, I know the Blackhawks benefited from that for quote unquote benefited so, so from the, it. So the Rangers. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think the, the playoffs, they're, they're already two months long. It's, it's, it's enough. And, and the wild card teams, you might get some good ones in there. Like look, the Panthers last year, like they, they were a team that underachieved, but still were really dangerous in the playoffs. But more often than not, those wild card teams are, aren't the ones that really like really do the damage. So expanding it to add more of those teams who didn't make the wild card, it's just like you're just kind of cluttering things up. Yeah, I, I don't think we're adding teams is a good idea, but we are later in the show going to get to a, a reconsideration of the playoff format. Just the more teams you add, it makes the regular season less important. Yep. And you're going to see you thought this year's trade deadline was lame. Well, what happens when three quarters of the league is making the playoffs? No one's going to be trading. Yeah, and like it's just I, you, half the league is to me is too many. Like I, I, I mean, oh, sixteen is an it's even fine. number, but like to me, playoffs should be for the elite of the elite, not like the hey, I finished one game over five hundred, I get a shot at the championship. Yeah, I mean, I've seen it. We've seen enough like lowers because what the problem with that though is like if you have a team that suffers a major injury, that's a really good strong team. Mm-hmm. And it's and you only have what eight playoff teams are you saying or how, right or if you only like, if you only take the top yeah. top four of each conference like that's tough it is tough and it's short and the league wants to expand you know they want to expand that playoff window of revenue well, as then, much as possible and the possible. playoffs are the best commercial for hockey there is yeah exactly then shorten the regular season if you want more playoffs sure. shorten the regular season sure. I'm fine with that and get rid of the loser point well yeah you could shave that's ten cool. games off of the regular season and I'd be completely fine yeah yep next. Man, you guys are flying. I'm trying to build these graphics over here. Uh, okay. Uh, this is from Dizzy D22277, a.k.a. Dwayne. Uh, smart, smart, smart and handsome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you think there's more to Kurashev than most see? I asked because last year he was on the line with Reichel and Andreas Athanasiu, and that line was awesome. Now with Bedard, he's shining, and even when Bedard was hurt, he held his own. I think people are starting to figure it out that Philip Kurashev is... Sure, he's benefiting from playing with the counter Bedard as anybody would, mm-hmm. but he's also a pretty damn good player on his own. And like we've we talk about this a lot, is, is this rebuild continues and these prospects come up that not everyone's going to be great right away, and it takes some guys some time to fully realize their games. And if this is the guy that Philip Kurashev is, he's likely going to finish somewhere in the fifty range of points this year. Mm-hmm. Great, yeah, that's great. That's a huge win. And and what you were. Now maybe what you're afraid of losing if you if you don't think Reichel is ever going to pan out, that's sort of a swap, right? Like all right, well Reichel didn't work, but Kurashev is better than expected. Yeah. So maybe you call that a wash. I don't know. It'd be great if they were both really good, 
But there's nothing I've seen from Kershaw that makes me think it's smoke and mirrors. No, and it's it's been kind of a a slow build to this point. Like he's taken some time to develop through playing in the AHL and then getting you know opportunities in the NHL. And and it was what two season and a half, two seasons ago, where it was just like, what is Philip Kershaw? Like they bouncing him around all over the lineup, and now he's this the, at the end of last season and now this season, he's been able to get more regularity in his responsibilities and his role and his spot in the lineup, his line mates. Um, and it's doing wonders for him. And, and yeah, I think uh, as the uh, Dwayne smart slash handsome said, um, when Bedard was gone, uh, Kurashev was kind of the top offensive option. And even though the team wasn't scoring a lot, like he was, the, he was the go-to guy and was able to kind of hold that role for what it was. And, and what he was able to do. So when this team is a little bit more talented, if there's ever a situation where Philip Kurashev doesn't have Connor Bedard to play off of, at least you can say, well, it's not the worst thing that he's one of the top guys because, you know, he's proven that he can kind of handle that workload. Yeah, he had a goal and uh, five assists in the 14 games without Connor Bedard. So still somewhat productive, almost a half a point a game without Bedard on the line. So well, he barely scored half a point for a, a game. Team that's, <laughs> for a team that scored 1.2 goals in per right, game in those exactly. 14. Right. So he basically yeah. was like half the offense over that fourth 14-game stretch. Yeah. yeah. But they score like 16 goals in those 14 games, and he factored that in on six of them. kind of be the math, yeah, so, I would think. Yeah, it wasn't good. So, uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, Kershev has come a long way from being a, a mid-round pick that nobody really had, you know, great – plans for Mm -hmm. visions for you know was in rockford for a season and did okay down there and dealt with with some injuries too yeah early on struggle a bit here struggled to find his spot we had Derek king on one of our first ever shows Derek king when he was still head coach said yeah he admitted like i kind of screwed up with philip kershev because i didn't know where to play him right Mm -hmm. and then finally i just put him in a spot and let him go and that's when he started to it was the end of that season we started to see a little more and then I think this last season, having the spot, you know, I'm going to play every night. Hey, I'm going to play in the top six every night. That got the wheels yeah. in motion. Definitely. All right, we're going to take our first break of the show, but we'll be back with more of your mailbag questions. And if you got something in the comments, throw it up, and we'll, maybe we'll get you. If you pay for it with the Super Chat, Yeah, we'll more definitely likely. get to it. <laughs> <laughs> Increases the odds. Yes. Speaking of... Uh, that yes. hey prize picks it's a lot of fun to play uh, prize picks the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America it's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports because it's just you against the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players including pros and sharks all you got to do is pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in uh, it's tournament time. It's a big time in college basketball. Uh, that means the biggest moments are getting closer. Be a part of the action on prize picks for both the men's and women's term, college basketball tournaments. And right now, you can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into 1000 with NBA, wow. NHL, and college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. So go to prizepicks.com slash CHGO and use the code CHGO for a first deposit match of up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash CHGO and use the code CHGO. Pick more, pick less. It's just that easy. And when you're making your prize picks for the college basketball tournament, that happens to happen in March. Uh, do so with some delicious Salerno's pizza oh. right at your side. March Ooh. Madness is upon us. Watch the big dance live at Salerno's. Salerno's on tap, located at 1201 West Grand Avenue in Chicago, or call them for carryout and delivery. When you mention CHGO, you're going to get half off the price of your pizza. Call 312-666-3444 or go to salernospizza.com. Again, head to salernospizza.com or call them for more information. And that's half off the price of your pizza, not half of a pizza. 
I, one, two, uh, sausage and pepperoni for me. Six, six, six. Uh, go with the extra thin. <laughs> extra thin. Devil pizza. I love I they have it. six, six, six in their number. Uh, we need to remember that when uh, we place our next office order that, hey. Yes. No, we need to remember to contact Jim before we make our next He order. thinks tomorrow night might be the night for a Salerno. Mm. By the way, have you guys mm-hmm. looked at Jim today? Do you think he's having a mental breakdown? To. Yeah, what's going on with the uh, inside out shirt and inside out t shirt and sweatpants? It looks like what you you realize you're in public, right? (laughs) (laughs) What is going on there? It's just been washed. He's owned it since he was in the sixth grade. It's just been washed. Way too tight. It's like, I mean, this this is like a, there's like a, I feel like. We have. I mean, it is warm in the intervention. office. We need intervention. He, he yes, obviously, he obviously had no face-to-face meetings with Jim. You gotta, today. you gotta walk. You gotta walk on set here and let people know what we're uh, talking about. Yeah. No, don't put it the is, hoodie on. It is warm in the office. <laughs> we need the full effect. I don't know. I, I'm not. It's sure part of the ensemble. I can't cannot see that. Give us a little bit of a. Give us a little twirl. There you That's, go. Uh, <laughs> that that shirt has gone through many wash cycles. Wait, stay there. Thirty. I'm now forty. Ooh, oh, that's ten so years. Ten ten years, years of wash it's cycles. An undershirt for the zip up, mm. but it gets so hot in this office. It is a little toasty in it here. It sure does. Can't wear it. Unless it's winter, then it's right, freezing in here. All right, that's enough. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> Goodbye. Good. All right, there you go. All right, better. Anyways, that's better. All right, better help maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we have assaults happening on set. All right, well we know he needs to chill, and when it is time to chill, he needs to chill. There's out. nothing better to chill with. Than a nice chilled Coors Light. Sure. It is uh, what we have when we are dealing with a very chaotic and stressful Blackhawks game. Uh, and we go to it all year long when we're, whether we're out with friends, whether we're hanging out at home, watching a movie, watching a tournament, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, nothing's better for a chill time, be it stressful or relaxing, than Coors Light. When those mountains turn blue, it is as cold as the Rockies. Coors Light, you should know by now, it's cold lagered, cold filtered. And cold package for a smoother finish. When it's time to chill, crack open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment, crisp and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies. When it's time to chill, Coors Light is the beer we reach for. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash THGO Hockey. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. 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 Chill. Cold. Refreshing. Chilling. Mmm. Look at that, Mario! What a billboard! Just billboard a shill. Coors Light today. A, sh- a chill shill right there. Yeah, you are. <laughs> when you need to shill, reach for Coors Light. <laughs> reach yes. for Coors Light. Ah, yeah. So if you have a few bucks in your pocket, give him the Mario, and he will proudly display your logo <laughs> yes. each and every way. Hey, don't wrong with that. You, you yeah. pay for it. I will put it on. All right. Next. Okay, we're back and to we're the back. sack of mail. I think you're going to like these next two. These are our last mm. two at the moment. Again, unless someone has anything in the chat. But right, uh, here right. we go. This is from yeah. Ryan, uh, Rhino Dino 23. Who is your favorite <laughs> team to play with in NHL hits? Uh, right, I, right in the nostalgia bone. I was a loyalist, man. I, I, I'm, whenever I play a game, I am Chicago teams. Yeah, yeah. I usually always played the Blackhawks. I don't stray. And when I, even when I play Ultimate Team in NHL 24, it's not Black all Blackhawks Hawks players, but it's Blackhawk uniforms. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, the uniforms look great. Uh, NHL Hits, the original, uh, came out in 2001. Uh, that is right in line with the time that like my my love for hockey started. Obviously, the Blackhawks were a, a major part of that. Another big part of that was uh, I had a an older cousin who... Uh, was actually drafted by the New York Rangers in the 2002 draft. Nice. So I would play as the New York Rangers uh, in NHL hits because the Blackhawks weren't a really good team in that game. Uh, so I went with uh, the Rangers most often. And if I can recall off the top of my head correctly, that was Mike Richter, Brian Leach, Eric Lindros, uh, pre-Blackhawks Theo Fleury, Peter Neved and Mark Messier were the playable uh, New York Rangers. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's pretty a pretty. Good. It was a pretty, uh, pretty solid team, and the Blackhawks at that time were not great. I want to say it was Tebow and Tim Tebow. Tebow, sorry, Justin um, Tebow. <laughs> Tebow and uh, Jamnov. Yeah, I think Amani was on that team. Amani, if, if, if I'm thinking of the right year, was that like was Martin Lapointe on that? That team? That would have been the 0-1-0-2 team. 
Yeah. That team that snuck into the I'm playoffs. I'm trying to find the roster. I can't find it. I can't find them. I can't find I always play it as the Blackhawks, though. Uh, any yeah. any hockey I, game, the old yeah. EA, I was always the Hawks. Uh, any hockey game, I was always I, Like, every once in a while, I'd get crazy, and I'd start a season or start and play with another team, and I would immediately not like it because I wanted <laughs> it. I'd be like, no, I want to play You don't with care the about these yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, that NHL hits, man, that is that is a, a game that I played for thousands of hours as a kid. Um and then, uh, you know, I, th- I was a fool when I was younger and thought, oh, I'll trade in all my games to GameStop so I can save money on these other games. And then I realized later in my years that I was like, wait, I loved all those old games. So I've actually yep. s- spent more than I got <laughs> in return from GameStop to rebuy those games. And NHL Hits was one that I was like, I'm rebuying this game uh, currently in my basement. I might fire that up tonight. I have it, too. I yeah. have it, too. I'm watching the intros here and I'm trying to see. Oh, it was sick. But they're not showing me. Like specific players, See, but I would think was Steve Sullivan would be on there. I, would, I think probably. I, I believe so. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah um, Jamnov, Mani Daze, Sullivan. They they would have all been on that team. Yeah, yeah I. Uh, you know, they give a little shout out to uh, the uh, the Galloping Ghost Arcade in, oh, in Brookfield because oh, yeah. they've got NHL hits the arcade version there, and they have Wayne Gretzky 3D hockey mm-hmm. with Pat Foley. See, when I went See, there, that is, and I know. Foley was a uh, well, two-on-two two open two ice on challenge, two. which yeah. is okay. still my favorite. I've ever played. Oh, they have that also made too. by Midwest. Yes, yes. Yeah. but the uh, the I actually when I was there actually ended up playing the Wayne Gretzky 3D Hockey arcade, arcade more because I hadn't played it in years, and it, I'm now I'm trying to find one. I for, was on I was on that game for like an hour. Yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. I played it's it. Awesome. Very right. Craven on the Blackhawks, I believe in, I that, <laughs> in that game. I love uh, I love all those old games. They like were that. fun. Like, the Wayne fun. Gretzky 3D Hockey is underrated. Now my new goal is to find if anyone has a uh, N64, I'll trade you a PlayStation One for it, because um, I I'd love to play the old WCW NWO games I, again. I, yes. I have yeah. those somewhere. I'll bring yeah. them into the office. I, I gotta have, find it. They're have, at my uh, mom's house somewhere. I got WrestleMania 2000. Yes, with the N64. Was the, no Mercy was no the last Mercy. One? No Mercy was the really good. That one. was great. yeah. I have all those. I think my N64 is at my mom's house. So. Next time I go there, I'm gonna find it, bring it in, and we'll bring it in the office, and we'll do uh, Golden Eye. We'll we'll have Golden a oh, we'll have yeah. a uh, NWO versus WCW tournament. I mean, like mm-hmm. original Mario Kart is that's, original Mario that's Kart on, on the N64. Yeah, it doesn't trans. I've played it, and it doesn't translate as well. If you played the new ones, I haven't. You're kind of like that oh, is kind of frustrating to play now. But the those new- old wrestling games still stand up. And I yeah. I do, like as much as I complain about being old, I was born at the perfect time. Those games were peaking when I was in college. Yeah. Mm, That's mm-hmm. all we did. Well, yeah. Uh, GoldenEye is the reason I don't have a college degree. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, was, we uh, would play... Was GoldenEye it? and Marijuana are the two biggest yeah. reasons yeah, right. I don't have a college degree. <laughs> what was degree? the NHL version with Lindros on it? Was that 01? Or, oh, no. That was 99. NHL Faceoff? NHL EA's NHL. I think it was NHL 99. Whatever it was. It oh, doesn't yeah. matter. Um, we would just... It was for N64. And we would, on paper... Me and my three buddies would draft teams, and then I would go in and manually change the rosters, change the rosters. and we would have like a tournament. That's awesome. And then do it again and again. We just did it all the time. It was I, so fun. I love. I loved when games were that simple. Like, I stopped you know, playing video games when like I think actually, and uh, NES sixty four or N sixty four. Whatever. It's like there's too many buttons all of a sudden. Mm. Just give me Sega Genesis with the ABC. That was also asking a lot. Yeah. Give me a, <laughs> give me Atari with a, a joystick a and joystick, a button. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, good times. Anthony you go back? Tony says, uh, "I don't play video games because I'm a grown man." Mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks for letting. You're us cooler than us. Cool. You must be fun at parties too. <laughs> All right. Anyway, one more, one more, and again, this is a fun one. And then we do have some super chats coming in. So uh, this is from Cricket. Hi, Cricket. What's your favorite snack or food that you will do anything? for so that you don't have to share i'll go first i make brownies extra fudgy since no one else in my family likes them undercooked that much uh, please send them to 1143 west rondell place yeah, uh, favorite snack for, are you gonna make me choose one that's hard favorite i'll share snack. most my thing is if i'm getting a food item that is numbered like a uh, 12 piece nugget or uh, you know, like a like a twenty piece chicken wing. I have ordered precisely. <laughs> I order precisely the number of items I want. Do not steal a nugget mm, or a wing mm, or a tender mm. from me. 
That's my thing. Like I know how snack. many. That's a really it's not a snack. snack. That's well, I mean, yeah. for that me, that sounds like snack. a personal problem for you. But I had a twelve-piece nugget snack on the way home from work last night. What are you talking about? Charlie's bacon is one of my favorite snacks slash meals. Don't share that. Don't. That's one that if there is if there is a, if there is a, a specific amount for you, you don't share it. Yeah. I like this time of year because I'm a huge fan of the jelly bean. And this mm. time of year, there's lots of different variations of the jelly bean out there. Jelly bellies are the best, no doubt. They're very good. But the Starburst jelly Starburst beans are, great. are fantastic. Mm-hmm. And I just saw somebody sent the I'm Fat podcast uh, Dreamsicle jelly beans. I can't find them. That sounds good. But if any of you guys see those, buy them for me and I will pay you for them. Um, Dreamsicle flavored anything is usually really good. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I live and die for Dreamsicle stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, I got to find those. Well, I will say that it's not hard for me to uh, get treats that are all mine just for me because being gluten-free, most people don't want to eat the stuff that uh, has the wrong kinds of flour in it that tastes odd, but uh, uh, my wife has made gluten-free cinnamon rolls, and I will eat the entire pan, Um, one, because they're so delicious, and two, because no one else is going to do it, so I will. Yeah. I, that's it sucks for you the uh, the gluten free tax. It's fine. I'm I'm over it. Like whenever we order food, it's like, Ugh. yeah. Our our giant forty five inch yeah. pizza is seventeen dollars. <laughs> Mario's two inch tiny personal pizza is one hundred and seventy five dollars. Yeah, because well, it's gluten free. There's no fr- well. there's no free in gluten free. That's <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah. That's, there's definitely a tax on it's the rough. old uh, gluten sensitivity. All right, well, are we in the break zone? Uh, no, let's do a couple super chats that right, have come nice. in. Uh, some questions. Oh, let me get here. Michael first here. I gotta. Okay, Michael I'm first. sorry, okay, Michael. I've still not mailed your puck. I'm getting to it. I'm sorry. Mail his it's puck. It's coming. He won the uh, Mail his Corey puck. Crawford one. The pick your number game we played uh, the yeah. other night, and I just have not gotten around to it, Michael. I'm very, very sorry. It's coming. Uh, but Michael says, "Would you welcome the idea of the Hawks trading their first round pick?" And a prospect for someone like Jack Hughes or Nico Nico Sure. Yes. I'm, I'm, yeah. they, uh, that's just not going to happen. But right. sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll take 20, what, 24, 25-year-old Jack Hughes. I don't even think he's team. that old. No, he's not even that old. 23? He's 21. Maybe? No. He's 22. 22. 22. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. if you're saying <laughs> yes. number I'll one. I'll give you the entire 2024 Blackhawks draft nah, for Jack yeah, Hughes. I don't know about that. I'll, give, would, you, uh, I'll give you the f- – Unless they win. I would give the first overall pick and uh, another higher-end prospect for Jack Hughes immediately. Yes. I would do that. Number one overall pick and Nazar for Jack Hughes. Done. Done. I'd even like they want yeah. Kevin Korchinski. I give him two. Well, Jack now, you're, now you're getting now you're getting silly for Jack Hughes. Yeah, done. It's only a, the first round pick and a prospect. Right. It's nothing else. It's not a real Jack Hughes trade. It's just the sh- the low ball. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. I All would right. I would low ball the hell out of the. Oh, then, then it's Marcel Marcel. <laughs> He's a prospect. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yep. Just not Savoie. He's the only untouchable. No. All right. Uh, Thomas with the five dollar super chest says wild idea. What are your thoughts on MLB colors for Winter Classic jerseys? Cubby blue for the Hawks and Cardinal white for the Blues. No. If it wasn't the Blues, I'd consider it. Yeah, that, it doesn't work. And the situation. Blues will look like the Hawks because you're the flipping Hawks colors. Will look like the Blues. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't like that. No, no I don't like that no. idea. But if it was I like that. the Avalanche and maybe the Avalanche wore purple and purple. like purple and silver and the Hawks wore red and blue, I could be down with that. But when it's the Blues wearing red yeah, and the Hawks wearing blue, yeah, that's very weird. No. no, I mean you could do a fun baseball theme jer- jersey, if like you a warm up jersey or something. You can do something to make it a little more, um, you know, traditional, old school. But yeah, no, you can't. You can't flip it around like that. I mean, maybe you put like the Cubs and some, or the the Blackhawks in like a give them pinstriped. Hockey jerseys. Oh God! <laughs> look, let's go. Let's go crazy. Um, look interesting. Yeah, you can. Uh, well, the Canadians did the Expos colors. Yeah, that worked. Yeah, yeah. But uh, are, yeah, I you can't those. do. Yeah, um, they would switch. The this, this color scheme would get s- switched up. But uh, we'll see what happens. Bring well, back the black jerseys. Emmanuel in the chat uh, says Adidas will find a way to ruin it. Regardless, that's not Adidas's problem next year. It's fanatics, yeah, right. And so they will find will a way, hundred percent, screw it yes. up. That is, uh, that is no doubt. We have something going on. Colin, uh, Colin Blackwell not will not practice today. Upper body. Yeah. All right. Me thinks Ken the Ant Whistle is getting in, back in the lineup. Tomorrow. I would think so. Uh, I got one more super chat here from Windy City Hockey. It says, "How about a color versus color winter classic? Blackhawks and red, blues and blues. I, I love that. Color yes. rush, baby. You sure, see yeah. it with uh, USC works. and UCLA." 
Bam, wear bam, it bam, bam, all every year, and it looks bam. awesome. NBA, oh, the NBA does it all yeah. the time. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously the, Thursday night football yeah. NFL started that. Fine. I'm, I'm, I'm all fine. for that. Yeah. Yes. Fortunately, we now have color televisions, yeah. right. <laughs> so it's okay. Nice. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. The, the color matchups, that's, that would totally be fine. All right. Well, you know where you can get your choice of colors. Uh, where? In many vehicles. places. Oh, yeah. Ah, yes. Uh, that would be our good friends at Ray, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. 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 And if you're in the market for a new vehicle, we've got great news for you because they are celebrating the Jeep Celebration event all month long. You know what that means? What? what? You'll be able to rave about your savings at a, on a wide selection of a great inventory for a limited time. Lease a new 2024 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo Attitude. Or no, wait, is that? It's Altitude. Oh, altitude. man, Attitude's yeah. cooler. I would have bought an Attitude, but not you an Altitude. change it. Mm. Uh, just $439 <laughs> a month for 39 adjustment. months. And if that Jeep Grand Cherokee isn't big enough for you, check out the third row and lease a new 2024 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited L. It's a W. It's not an L. You're definitely getting Hold a W with L. that. For just four seventy nine dollars a month for only 39 months. That's less then four years, and then you own it. That is less than it's four good. years. I like that. At Ray, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Cram, Ram, you'll Cram. always be able to shop one of Chicagoland's largest inventories and drive home with more money in your pocket than you'd expect thanks to Ray's price promise. Don't miss out. Shop great deals all month long and save big because Ray, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Cram. Ram makes buying a new vehicle more affordable than ever, and that's not all. Just for listening, you're going to get yourself a free oil change when you mention CHGO at the service center or mention CHGO when you book online at Ray CDJR slash service, but you got to schedule it before April 1st. Don't so if you're in the fool. market for a new vehicle, then you have to check out the team at Ray Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Ram. Ram, because they're the only team we recommend. Visit them today on Route 12 in Fox Lake. For more information, head on over to uh, www.raycdjr.com. Serving in the community since 1963. HTTPS colon slash slash www. Slash World Wide Web. Hey, there's some... There's some I know. Older folks that yeah. still need to know that. Get your parents' a, permission before going online. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> for an Indian in a minute. All right. And if you're tired of playing, of paying several prices for your cleaning products, not your cleaning products, but your cleaned clothing items, you should visit CD One Price Cleaners. Why? Right. Well, oh, first of all, right. they've got low prices. Customers can save over 30% on their dry cleaning bill by switching to CD One Price Cleaners. They've got tr simple, transparent service. Other cleaners charge a different price for every garment type, plus they have upcharges, and you might pay a different price every time you visit. At CD1 Price Cleaners, they charge, wait for it, one low price for wow. any garment, Ooh, even yo. sports jerseys that may nice. be stained in pizza and or nacho cheese. Mm. The same low price. CD1 or Price Cleaners has your order ready. That's a good night. The same or next day. Other cleaners take two to four days to have your, cleaning, your cleaned garments ready, and by then I forgot they exist. CD1 Price Cleaners sends you a text message when your order is ready for pickup. They offer dry cleaning, wash and fold laundry, blankets and comforters, tailoring and alterations, leather cleaning, area rug cleaning. Visit chgo.cdone.com or follow the link in our description. Once you're there, you can pick from an in-store coupon or online pickup and delivery coupon options. Again, chgo.cdone.com. Go for it. Do it. Do it now. Do it now. Get your stuff cleaned, you, you yeah. filthy animals. That's what I was thinking, too. Yes. Come on. Do it. I'm here. Give me now. That's a neighbor. Good job. I thought he was. I thought Schwarzenegger actually walked in here, <laughs> but it was just Lawrence. <laughs> no. That just we, no helicopter landed. It definitely <laughs> wasn't him. <laughs> That's right. All right. Where do we want to go off. next, fellas? We want to do the rule changes. We want to do the playoff standings. What are we, what are we feeling here? All right, good stuff. <laughs> Why don't we start with the rule changes? Uh, the uh, general manager's Whatever's meetings, ready. Mario just stared at me blankly, uh, were, uh, they happen every year, annual, uh, and they were in Florida, and there are some new rules being proposed. Uh, one is a coach's challenge to review whether or not a puck hit something when it went over the glass. The coach's challenge would allow teams to avoid a penalty for sending a puck over the glass if video review can show it struck something, but if a coach gets it wrong, a team would incur two penalties instead of just one. No, ah. more, no more challenges. Dude, there's too many challenges to begin with. Screw it. Yeah. No, I hate it. Get the call right. Get rid of all challenges except for is it a goal or is it not a goal? Because, again, 
if you need to challenge it, it was not egregious. The spirit of the puck over the glass rule is, was this player intentionally clearing the puck over the glass to stop the play and get a line change? But if it hits something, then it's not, in, it's, it's not over the glass. It's a deflection. Right. So but, get so if you you believe that it hits something, you don't want that penalty. You shouldn't have to get that penalty well, if it hits I, something. My bigger issue with this one is that why would it be two penalties? I don't know. If well, if you other, get it, if you get it wrong, then it's because you've it's, now it's, delayed the It's game the wrong twice it's the wrong challenge. Shooting the puck over the glass. And it's it's a punishment for getting the challenge. Oh yeah, because you're still going to get the penalty against you. It's like it's like losing a timeout when no, you lose tough. a challenge. Yeah. That's the well, I, well I that's well, and that's that that, that sh- deters that people teams from being like, like yeah. well, maybe it did, maybe it didn't. You'd rather just say, all right, let's just kill the two minutes rather than let's kill four minutes. No more. Um, no more but if you're no if you're certain that it hit something and you have I mean, these teams have the ability to go yeah. to their own video team and say, Hey, did it hit something? We have 10 seconds to make a challenge call. Um, they can do that. So that's high risk. Look, if it, if, if, if it, if you feel like the call is incorrect and your player says, no, that hit a stick or they hit the boards or hit the glass or whatever. And you don't want that two minute penalty. If you don't think you should have it, I'm fine with it. Yeah. I, I mean, look, but how often has that been an issue though? Where they just got to get egregiously wrong. Like, I can't remember one time this year where I'm like, oh, my God, that hit a guy's stick. That's bullshit. I don't remember doing yeah, they, that. I, I yeah. feel like just, and it, of course, there's someone has probably done the scientific work on this, but I feel like they only really call it if they're sure. Right, yeah. It, yeah. Might, be, but, it might be missed that it didn't hit something and went out. Yeah. I wonder if you can review it that way. Maybe. Can you say, no, 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 that didn't hit a stick. That's not clear. Yeah, see, no, yeah. no, no. Too many freaking challenges. Stop. Yeah, no. they're not going to stop, no. though. That's the problem. Is well, if it's such a small percentage of plays, then it really won't matter except because where are they going to stop, though? What, what plays are going to – there's going to be no play redeemed unreviewable anymore. Yeah. And it's, there's already too many challenges. Get the call right. Less, yeah, I mean, either get – and this takes pressure off the referees because they're like, well, maybe I got it right, maybe I got it wrong, but they'll just challenge it. We'll, we'll confirm it. So, they'll, like – Human error is part of everything human. I, I, I would like to believe in a scientific study that, like, every team that had a bad call go against them by the end of the season, they probably get bad yeah, calls in their favor. Yeah. And I'm sure it's pretty even at the end of the year. The only reviews I'm okay with are if a puck crosses the goal line or not. That is it. Everything else, just let them play. Like, if, if you got a Zapruder film, a skate, for five minutes to figure out if it was offsides, whatever the call was, yeah. let it stand. Well, it's that's, that's what I'm saying is, it didn't. If it's if it's so close that you at the as our buddy DJ Bean from what Cast calls it, uh, circumcising a mosquito with the Zapruder film, it didn't affect the play. It did not impact the outcome of the play. If it's frame by frame right. by frame, was a stick over that was a puck over. It didn't matter. It didn't make a difference. That that one sixtieth of a second. Or no, what was it? Twenty four frames in a per second. I mean, it's so be the one twenty fourth of a second. You know, we use thirty frames per second here. So yeah, things you can, can get up 60. to like sixty frames per second. I think not on television. though. I think TV is twenty four frames per second. Okay, I don't know. Well, if you have stuff. like a really nice TV, uh, but still, the cameras matter. <laughs> I think we've lost the point of the discussion. <laughs> I think we have, uh, but we should continue to circumcise mosquitoes. Um, the other one, Greg, you'll love this one. Another challenge. No. Another challenge was reflected, requested for friendly fire, minor, minor penalties for high sticking, seeking to show if it was a player's own stick or a teammate's. Yeah. So if a guy gets hit yep. with a, a two sticks come up, they hit the guy in the face. The guy, if the guy hits him, uh, hits himself in the face, it's not a penalty on somebody else. Right. Like that's get that get that call correct too. No. We know your stance. No more I, freaking I, challenges. I say get get the call right. Like, because then you're going to get guys. Great. Every game's going to be nine hours. Then long you're going to get guys who are going to get right. their stick lifted and be like, oh, if I take this, like, I could, I could bonk in my own face and get a high sticking call. I don't, I mean, if Not we're really, talking about that, if we're talking about how if you're often willing to hit yourself, happen. if you're willing to hit yourself in the <laughs> face with a stick to get a power play, you deserve that power play, damn it. <laughs> well, now it deters that. I guess. Because that's a serious problem in the NHL right now. It is. <laughs> All right, other proposals include, we don't need to break all these down, but granting a replacement goalie a warm-up if the player he subs in for is removed by a concussion spotter. 
That seems fair. Mm. That yeah, that seems either. fair. <laughs> uh, giving both the that's a good point. Giving both the defensive and offensive center a warning for a violation on a faceoff after an icing. Currently, the only the defensive center gets one, while the offensive center gets ejected from the faceoff dot. Not the game. Whatever. I don't care. Uh, if a play uh, okay. is blown dead because a goalie loses his mask, the other team is awarded a choice of which offensive zone dot the ensuing faceoff will take place on. Sure. Whatever, sure. Fine. Sure. Okay. Uh, moving a face off one zone to the benefit of the non offending team if a player refuses to play a puck off a high stick or hand pass. So that is to reduce those guys who stand, it's high stick and they just, just watch stand the puck over it, yeah. and wait for the other team to touch it. Okay. There you go. That's fine. Uh, one immediate change will see players get a warning and then a penalty for hanging their legs over the bench during play. This is a tactic widely employed when players change on the fly. But a recent injury to an official prompted this adjustment, according to Sportsnet's Elliot Friedman. By the way, I was reading all these from a Sportsnet.ca article, mm. so I want to give them proper credit. The hanging, Fine. the hanging the leg over. I mean, that that saves you what half a second on a line change. Like I know that could make a big difference, but also. If it's a Whatever. safety issue, fine. I'm fine with it. Yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. If you're not dangling your your skate out there and a ref skates backwards into it and cuts their leg. Yeah, I mean. Like, yeah, don't do that. You're also risking your own injury, too. Yes, right? you, you are. Yeah. yeah. For safety, for safety's sake, fine. I'm all for safety. Yeah, the only dangles we need are with a stick. Yeah, the puck. Yes. right. Exactly. So, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm of two minds about the, the replay thing. I just, yeah. like, if the technology exists to get the call right, like the goal over the line, Yes. But again, if we're just going frame by frame by frame to see if the heel of a skate was over before the puck, it's like, it doesn't matter. It's not the spirit of of replay. Yeah. It's like just replay should be for black or white goal or no goal. That's it. That is it. Stop. Like there's too many challenges already. I know they've, there's less now than there were mm-hmm. before when they started with the whole lose lose a challenge get a penalty. It's just too much because it just it takes well, away from yeah. these things. And it's and it, hockey is a game that it's fast moving. There's I you know, we compare it to pinball all the time. Like baseball is a series of events. Football is a series of events. It is a singular play. Did he catch it? Did he not? Was he over the first down marker or the goal line or not? These are very like cut and dry things. Right, but you see it in in soccer. They have the technology to review if a if a ball goes over the line. They do have the technology to sh- that shows a line like after an offside call, mm-hmm. but they don't review an offside call. Uh, what they, in soccer? No, they a uh, million percent do, and it's really stupid. They it's stop just, the no, play now. No, no they the, do. Oh yeah. yeah, it's the same. It's actually oh, it's worse than hockey because you'll, it'll be a goal, and still people are celebrating. And now people don't celebrate half the time because they wait to see if it's checked. To see if the guy was offside or not, and then it's like, you. But lose. did he do it on non goals? On non goals, because uh, there's no reason. That's no. what I'm talking about. Like, no, yeah. yeah. I mean, they don't do it on non goals in hockey either. But yeah. But if um, you if if the play if there is a scoring play, and if a team brings the puck into the zone and holds it in the zone for a minute and a half and then scores and then you go wait 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 he was offside, like that's right. Or that 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 Bedard takes that off against Boston where Boston. They came in offsides. Boston got control of the puck, then turned it back over. Like once the other team, the defensive team gets possession, yeah, yeah. offsides should be wiped out. Like it was, yeah, like the, like it's, again, we've taken what once used to be a simple rule and turned it into this gray glob of uncertainty. And, uh, you know, it's it takes away. Hockey needs to be, it's a fast-paced sport. Mistakes are going to happen, but I don't want to sit there for ten minutes w- waiting to see if if a play was a pl- just just yeah right too many challenges too many uh, in all sports base, pe- baseball challenges are are even worse. There's there should be a time limit on that's it. That's how, how you fix this. How much time the refs get to make a definitive call. And if you can't make one at the end of the time limit, then it's a. Uh, if you see all the, the, the play, angles, the play stands as and call. And you can't make the call by looking at each angle once, then right. the, whatever the call was stands. Like, yeah. You, you, I, I, th- I think that's fair. What's but a fair I, time limit? 30? 30, 30 seconds. One minute. Yeah, I mean, yeah you got to look at every replay. It might take a minute to do it. Yeah, one minute. And then, uh, yeah, if you, don't, if you don't have the opportunity or if you don't have the ability to 
make the call after that, then it then it stands. And plus, these are the the referees also have the video room in Toronto that reviews all these things. Yeah. So that's that's who they're getting in contact with. So it's not just the guys on the ice looking at the iPad. It's a a, a group of people re- review officials working remotely. So it's it's not just those four guys on the ice. So um yeah, I think if you have that many people looking at it at one time, you get a minute, you come to a conclusion and and you go from there. And if it's indecisive, then not not enough uh evidence to overturn the call call stands on the ice but i just think i I think having things having review there to make sure things are correct um i think is i think is fine as long as they implement a time limit but they're not doing that yet so trying to remember from my days of producing hawks games on a radio i think and maybe chris dubio can help me with this a tv timeout is either 115 or 145 i think is the length of that break Mm. seems longer it does seem longer, but it's I, enough to go get a bag of popcorn and uh, refill my soda. <laughs> that's right. And then come back to my you gotta seat. time yourself. And next veggie time. sticks. Yeah. And veggie sticks. Well, that's the only and do gluten. half of a read. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. That seems like it's as long as it is. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, they don't listen to us anyway. So no we're just flapping gums. No, we were, we were not invited to the GM meetings in Florida. Unfortunately. No. That'd be fun someday. Yeah. Someday mail maybe Kyle from Chicago will invite us. Maybe if Caleb Williams fun. goes to the GM meetings in Chicago and Florida we can go. That'd maybe. be fun. Yeah. All right. So uh last thing we're gonna do today, and this uh I, I woke up to this and it grinded my gears and then Greg uh sort of crunched some of the numbers himself. So Sportsnet, that's a big sports netty show today. Oh yeah, Friedman should come on to say thanks. Um they posted a gra- graphic of if the Stanley Cup playoffs started today. And I looked at this graphic, and it infuriated me because <laughs> I realized that after the first round of these playoffs, there's going to be a lot of good teams out. Yep. So looking at your matchups here, the Eastern Conference, you've got um, Boston and uh, the Washington Capitals. Detroit. No. Detroit. Detroit won last night, so they're ahead so of the Capitals. Graphic is oh, this is from yesterday. Are these, All are, right. these are the current. Here, All right, current. here's your current ones. Current. Uh, Boston versus Detroit. Uh, Florida, see, I'm mad about the algorithm. This popped up in my timeline like today at 11. Yeah. That's uh, a graphic from yesterday. You get things from like January 30th. It's really annoying. It's really okay, so uh, Eastern Conference, Boston Thanks, versus Elon. Detroit, Florida versus Toronto, the Rangers versus Lightning, and the Hurricanes and the Flyers. So you're going to lose one of Florida or Toronto. In Toronto, no matter that's, what the format, Toronto's okay. out in the first and round. And one of the Rangers <laughs> and Lightning in the first round. Yeah, that's that happens. Not great. It's not great. That I'm okay with because the point difference between those teams is there's a gap there. Western Conference, you've got Winnipeg and Nashville, Colorado and Dallas, Vancouver and uh, Vegas, and Edmonton and the Kings. You could very much be looking at a second round of the Western Conference playoffs without the Avalanche, Golden Knights, or Oilers. There's a very real yeah. possibility that happens. I mean, yeah, and that can happen in any format, but yes. Yeah, you're, 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 you're guaranteeing. Like, you look at those three teams in the Central, yeah. they're all within one point of the top spot in the West. Yeah. So you're literally going to lose possibly two of your four best teams in the first round. Yeah, losing one of Colorado or Dallas right off the bat, that's that stinks. Because those are those are two legitimate cup contenders, and you lose one of them right away. Yeah, that's that that one hurts. So if they reverted back to the one versus eight format, there's not a huge variance from what was there before. Uh, it's Boston, Detroit, Florida, Philly, Rangers, Lightning, Hurricanes, Leafs. So Philly and Toronto flip in the East. Right? Yeah, okay. in the West, uh, it's still Vancouver and Vegas, Winnipeg and the Kings, Colorado and Nashville, Dallas and Edmonton. That feels a little more fair. A little Dallas more balanced Edmonton would be a good one. They have a rivalry from some playoff series. Mm-hmm. Winnipeg Kings. I mean, you think of that big off-season trade. That's 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 an intriguing matchup yeah. right there. And two teams that play similar styles of hockey. Um, but and then you would I the, if you're going to do one through eight, you got to do it how they used to do it. Reseed, reseed, the after. reseed. Round. Yeah. yeah, yep. I mean, the way they used to do. Remember, they did one through eight though. The top three seeds were always the division winners. When, so, yeah, like when the there were three th- divisions. When the three seed would always be like this, like would normally be like the seven seed, but now they're mm-hmm. the three seed. Yeah, I didn't like that either. One through eight. Uh, our pal Nick Felino last time he was, was here said he wants one through, one through 16. 16, get yep. rid of the conferences, yeah. 
and I am down for that because carbon, carbon footprint be damned. This is this is great because in one through sixteen, Detroit Red Wings are out, Minnesota yeah. Wild are in. <laughs> and that's not yeah. why I, I'm a, that's Suck not it. why I'm approving, but I mean, it it's an added bonus. But some of these first round matchups are fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, Boston Wild, Florida versus Philly again. Rangers versus Vegas. Vegas. That'd be a fun one. A yeah. One. Vancouver mm -hmm. versus Tampa. Fun. Ooh. Freaking Winnipeg Kings miles. again. The yeah, There's your freaking fire yeah. miles. Winnipeg Kings again. Colorado, yep. Nashville again. Carolina, Toronto again. Dallas, Edmonton again. Yep. So when you do one through eight, it kind of puts it in the right spot. Um, one through 16 is fine. And uh, yeah, you, yeah, as Kay says in the chat, you would have to make a regular ske a season schedule change. Yeah. Do it. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Do it. You also might have to change your playoff format too. Because you do talk about the carbon footprint aspect, and you might have to try to find a way to have teams travel back and forth less often. Well, then if you first then high speed rail instead you, of two two one one one, yeah, you, you would do, do two three two two three two. Yeah, I'm with Mario. High speed rail. Yeah, that'd be fun. Most modern uh, advanced countries have some sort of high speed rail. Not we us, don't. Yeah. No. Anyways, the Texas. Anyways, that's a different uh, different problem. But yeah, the the one through sixteen, I think. Uh, it would be fantastic. And then you could just, I don't know, get rid of conferences and just open up your schedule. It's just more well, fun. That's what Jonathan Taves said a few years it's ago. It's more fun like that just, way. And just play series. Yes. Series play scheduling like would be another twice one. Twice in a row or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it the, when they had those, the COVID year yeah. where you, you played each team twice in the yeah. same city. Uh, do it like baseball. Would love um, that. You know. And Chris says NHLPA would never agree to one versus 16. And I thought that too. But then Felino was the one here hyping it up, stumping for it. Yeah. I th he can't I, be the only guy in a yeah, locker room. Yeah. He's not the only, I'm sure he's not the only guy that has that, uh, that thought process or that, fav that, you know, in favor of the one through 16. Like these guys, they, a lot of them are just, just care about the format that's in front of them. But a lot of them are fans of the wacky and wild of their own sport. So yeah. why, why not lean into it? Yeah. I mean, uh, I forget who it was in the chat. Someone said it wouldn't be great for TV ratings in the first round. And I mean, I don't know if yeah. if it's Boston and uh, you know whoever it might be on on the West Coast. It's it's a matchup you 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 open it up to matchups that you wouldn't normally see unless it was a Cup final. And I don't think you're worried about. I, let's be honest too. Like for the most part, hockey ratings are. It was the Cini. Thank you, Cini. Um, it's regional fans watching your regional teams well, until and, later in the later right, in the playoffs. And basically, yeah. it's diehard hockey fans watching. Right. Diehard hockey fans are going to watch Stanley Cup playoffs no matter who's playing. Like, yeah. You're not exactly expend like you know you're not you you want to get new viewers in in the during the playoffs, <laughs> but that, it's pretty much safe for the later rounds. If if we were TMPA. And uh, and and we were facing Vancouver, and our our, our pregame started at like ten thirty p.m. local yeah, or something. Deal with it. Hmm. Yeah, that's fine. There's no ideal situation. That's, yeah. that's, I, I just my my biggest thing is, and look, when we went one through eight, which would be probably the most realistic next scenario, it was very much the same. But it just it just sucks that so many good teams will be out so early, and it feels yeah. like maybe it's because the league has expanded so much. Maybe. But it felt like when I was growing up watching hockey, the first round matchups were pretty much aside from, you know, the middle ones. You knew one was going to beat eight, two was going to beat seven, and it was pretty clear cut that the best teams would be left yeah. when the dust settled. And now, I know it, it doesn't feel that way. I don't know. Yep. There's too many good teams going to be well, out in the it, first round. I mean, if you're worried about regional rivalries being uh, developed through the playoffs, um, a good way to develop those rivalries is the series scheduling have Chicago and St. Louis play each other, you know, th three games in a row. And by that third game, you're going to have tons of yeah. physicality and bite and scrums and all that stuff. So that you build those rivalries through the regular season so that when it opens up in the postseason, let's say th hypothetically, those two teams meet again, you've had eight, fiery matchups through the regular season and now you got the rivalry and, yeah. and the, spilling over into the postseason you don't want to just say oh you know these two teams played each other twice this season two months apart and now they're in now they're in a playoff series now it's a rival well no you, that still takes time to build right. i think that series scheduling would if you were to change the playoff format 
would still have those rivalries built in because you would get those fiery games in the regular season. I'm with you. I, I like that idea a lot. All right. Uh, while Cubs opening day is eight days away, CHGO Cubs is mere minutes away. So we're going to clear the way. We're going to let them in here. They're hanging out. They're ready to go. We're back tomorrow for another pregame show, 8.30, Hawks and Ducks. Yes, Ducks yes, are next. It is the Ducks. Yes, yes, Hawks and Ducks. Let's go. Puck drops at 9. We'll be with you at 8.30 pregame and, of course, postgame. So join us then. On your way out, please smash that like button for us. We'll talk to you tomorrow at 8.30 on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. <laughs> We all silly like the mayor. 